Hi everyone, um, my name is Dominic Broadhurst, I'm from the University of Salford. Um, I'm, my job role there is Head of Content and Discovery. Um, if anything like my daughter, you're probably thinking, what does that mean, Dad? What do you actually do all day? Well, in, in essence, my teams buy, acquire, make available content for the university library and for our staff in terms of teaching and learning research. We're also increasingly looking at creating content as well, and this is where our archives are important. So, and then the other side of that is I, I probably look after a budget, well, probably, I do look after a budget which runs in excess of millions of pounds, so that's another reason why I get invited to attend and join these library advisory boards. Um, it's not the only reason, I hope, but I think it's a significant reason. Um, and obviously AM is the best library advisory board that I sit on. But I do also turn library advisory boards down, and there's a number of reasons for that, and I sort of highlight what I think are the benefits of library advisory boards and what that brings from a librarian's point of view. You know, from a publisher's point of view, it's probably quite obvious they want to talk to librarians as potential customers to research products, etc. But I think there are a number of benefits for librarians about being members of these advisory boards, and this is the point of my talk today. So look, just a little bit of background information for those of you who don't know. The Library Advisory Board is made up of sort of librarians from a range of jobs in terms of content discovery, academic engagement, liaison. It's taken from a, a range of institutions right across the spectrum. And it also involves you know, a number of AM staff, not just in the sales, but also in the product development and a range of functions, really. And the point of it is really to have a two-way dialogue um, over the year for a number of formats, either face-to-face -face, um, and also online. And these can be the one-to-one -one consultations or more importantly, where we all get together and have a conversation, whereby really we find out a little bit more about what our priorities are, what our work are really. And I think that we are really useful for, in terms of me is that libraries you know, can't exist without publishers. We need high quality content to provide to our students and our academics. And at the same time, publishers can't do without libraries as well, really. So our sort of, even though we sort of veer away at different times, our needs are sort of, you know, identical and synonymous in providing high-quality content for our students and researchers. So I'm just going to talk about what I think is important for myself as a representative of the Library Advisory Board. I don't want to talk about other members, but I think there's some sort of general themes around there. And I think one of the big points for me is that we can advocate for libraries in terms of our sort of role and what we do and we sort of get out the work that we critically you know do for our students and our staff and our researchers etc and i think that's advocacy is a big point of, you know what we can do with our you know with our suppliers because we and our publishing partners we want to advocate what we need to them and that really leads into product development you know you often sometimes hear criticism saying oh publishers you know suppliers don't listen to what we want they just provide stuff well i think they're actually really keen on listening and what we really want to do is influence our product development basically their product development because at the, at the time that they're actually developing their products so we can impact and influence them you know for the benefit of our sort of students and our researchers and that links very much because the product development links very much about what we are about, you know, and our institutional priorities as, as universities, university libraries, our strategic aims really, which are very much tied into sort of teaching, learning and research really. We can get over to them the messages about what is happening in our institutions, which are then feed feel back into their product development, which is sort of a two-way cycle, then enables them to provide products that meet our sort of institutional needs. And I've mentioned teaching, learning, and research, but there's also broader sort of needs. You know, there's a lot of things around employability, for example, which I know is key in many of our institutions. There's sort of things around DEI and increased equity and sort of decolonizing our collections as well, really. So the point for me is to get this across to our partners in publishing to sort of influence their product development. You know, and this is really important to me because I think, you know, a lot of time librarians don't really understand the environment that publishers work in and I think you know through this dialogue both at a group level and on a one-to-one -one level we really sort of I you know really helps me understand you know what the priorities and also the needs and what the restraints that publishers work within as well really and I think this increased understanding is vital basically you know to sort of further in the work we do and this is something that you know I find you know invaluable really. 
you know, always, you know, the amount of conversations and contacts I've had from these advisory boards, both with publishing colleagues, etc., but also other librarians as well, really, you know, sharing expertise and hearing, more importantly, you know, your, every day is a learning day. I know that's a cliche, do, but I speak to other librarians, find out what's going on in their institutions, what they're doing, especially around our work around digital archives. So, and it's really enabled me to build my professional networks, you know, across, you know, sometimes you see the same people on the advisory boards, but a lot of the time it's different, you know, it's different people, and it's really helped me sort of broaden my professional networking. And then this is critical for us. I mean, you know, you know, and when, when I sort of am asked to sort of attend on um, library advisory boards, you know, one of the big things which makes me decide is how can this work sort of dovetail with our work at Salford, you know, in terms of what our institutional priorities are, also importantly what we're doing on the ground as well, really. So one of the key areas which, you know, especially being on the AM um, advisory board has helped us that. You heard earlier today from our colleagues at Liverpool University about their new digital platform and a couple of years ago we released our Sulphur Digital Archives which is basically our digital archive platform which has really brought to life our physical sort of um, pla uh, physical archives. Um, it's all freely available, open access on our website and you know we've got a regular programme each year we have a digitisation programme and we've got some great content coming up around Salford Literary Authors in November, December this year. Walter Greenwood who wrote Love on the Dole, we've digitised a lot of that material as well and it's all available but what works in terms of for me is that you know speaking with people who are experts in sort of digitisation, experts about putting resources and sources out there you know has really helped our sort of thinking and our knowledge and how we develop our own digital archives and for me when we do our teaching, our learning, our research, we sort of provide our archives, both the ones that we purchase from companies such as Adam Matthew and AM. Sorry, I will get that right. Um, you know, I've noticed quite a few people say, I already say Adam Matthew. It's AM, everyone. Okay, so, um, um, yeah, okay, yeah. But see me later. Um, uh, where was I? No, so, but also, and our own archives as well, and we offer them as a seamless primary sources because we're really keen on getting our students to look at our primary sources, both in terms of their learning, their research, but also their employability. So, you know, Salford Digital Archives and the archives that we acquire and we run them in tandem is really important. And, you know, it's a real sort of reason for uh, be able to bring that knowledge and that sort of those, you know, those contacts back into the workplace. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, the other reason for sort of um, membership is around potential collaborations. You know, AM are always looking at, you know, and other publishers are always who are in the archive space are always looking at new archives to um, sort of publish and sort of host, really. And we, even though this is a long way off at the moment, we are, have been in discussions with them about one of our sort of key archives, which is the British election campaign material, which has a lot of material from British elections, party posters, etc. You know, and we would love to digitise that at Salford, but, you know, honestly, we haven't got the sort of capacity, we haven't got the expertise, we probably haven't got the technical infrastructure, we certainly haven't got the time and the resource to digitise all that. So this is a project which, you know, it's, we're, we're working on at the moment. We don't know how it's going to, you know, obviously, you know, anyone who works with sort of archives with issues around copyright, digital ownership, you know, you know the list, basically. But one of those things is, Without this, me being a member of this advisory board and building those relationships with you know colleagues such as Claire, we would never even taken this off the first thing. You know, me having that knowledge of what Adam, AM, do, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and having those relationships and building those relationships at AM has enabled us to have those conversations around potential collaborations as well. Really, so I think that is something that you know. For us working in sort of the digital archive space and the digital primary sources space, you know, the, the benefits for collaborations only arise from really building those relationships which come from being a member of the you know, AM Library Advisory Board. And that's it, so we'll take questions at the end. Thank you, everyone.